I just wanted to talk about fashion trends. And somehow, in the introduction of this spring summer 2024 fashion trends article, courtesy of Vogue.co.uk, I happened to read this bit. Quote, does fashion have a woman designer problem? At LVMH, the world's largest luxury conglomerate, only Dior and Gucci have female creative directors, while Stella McCartney and Phoebe Philo are eponymously run. At Kering, the second biggest fashion conglomerate, not a single brand is helmed by a woman, nor a person of color." End quote. I'd like to think that we talk about equality more and more for everyone. We're built to be equals, regardless of the color of our skin, height, weight, or the absolute vastness of our bank account. Trust me, survival of the fittest doesn't mean how long you can survive your savings. That's capitalism, my friends. So if we continue talking about equality and inclusivity in fashion, how are we reading about white men leading the second largest fashion conglomerate? Fish, head, smell. And because the article tells us how bad it is over a caring, I was intrigued to see how well the rest of the aforementioned luxury conglomerate is doing. A short little disclaimer before I start, the owner of LVMH, Mr. Bruno, and his contribution to fashion industry is a whole another topic, and therefore I'll just leave it aside. I'll try to stick to this topic. Who boy? Before we jump into this, all opinions are my own and are just that personal opinions that don't really matter in the grand scheme of capitalism or things. All information presented is publicly available and humor error should be a factor considered. Please and thank you. Conglomerate of the day, LVMH, where MSC Louis Vuitton SE, more commonly known as LVMH, yes, it should be MHLV, stands as a French multinational luxury goods conglomerate. Established in 1987 through the merger of two companies, where MSC and Louis Vuitton, LVMH has since evolved into a global powerhouse in the luxury industry pushing forward quite a diverse portfolio of prestigious brands across a variety of sectors, including fashion, leather goods, perfumes, cosmetics, watches, fine jewelry, all the expensive things. Reporting 75 houses, 79.2 billion euro in revenues collectively, and more than 196,000 employees in 2022. Now, I think I think that LVMH website only reports houses that they have major stake in, because, for example, aforementioned Phoebe Philo is not on their website. What is that all about? Anyway, Bernard Arnault, CEO and chairman of the group, says about the group that, quote, our model, which is based on a long-term vision, values the heritage of our houses and stimulates creativity and excellence. It is the driving force for the group's success and the guarantee of its future, end quote. Yeah, no, he's just interested in being a rich white dude, and that is my opinion. So I made a list of brands and had a look at their leadership. Who's leading that women's creative, that men's creative, provided that the brand has both and not just one creative or artistic director, or actually does ready to wear and isn't just luxury goods only. I'll be using the terms creative and ad, uh, creative and artistic director synonymously. And I don't like to speculate on anyone's preferences when it comes to relationships, but if there is an openness that we can note, in terms of inclusivity, we probably should. And last but not least, who is in charge of the business? I'm gonna have a gander at the brand CEOs and see what's up. And that's that. LVMH lists them chronologically on their website um, based on when they were established, not purchased. But I got too excited and went top to bottom and made this list so sort of messy. Anyway. Thank you for making that announcement that no one cared about. Starting with one of my absolute favorites, Loeja, a Spanish brand by origin. CEO is Miss or Mrs. Pascala Le Pover. Oh, French names are gonna kill me. Both women's and men's creative is currently led by the very, very, very talented Jonathan Anderson, who's very openly gay. So we've got a lady CEO and a queer representation, and we're off to a fantastic start here. Let's keep it up. 
Moanang is a luxury goods company, fabulous trunks and bags now going through a whole revamp era. Definitely recommend checking them out. And a brand that was co-founded by a woman in 1849. Amazing. In 2024, we have Lisa Artia, who was lured over from Sephora, plus bond, and Nicholas Knightley leading the creative world. Not bad. Ah, oh, yes, Louis Vuitton. Let's start with the CEO. So we've got one of the most prestigious and profitable brands of the group, and the business is led by Pietro Beccari, uh, chairman, CEO, and a white man, and Delphine Armand, serving as a vice president, a daughter of Bernard, keeping in the family all nepotism, could any other boss lady rise to the top? Who knows? What do you people think? And somewhat recent appointment of Pharrell Williams to lead men's work. So we've got a white man, a woman, a previously very famous person of color. Okay then. Belluti. Belluti is Italian by origin, producing leather goods and menswear. It seems that Chris Van Asche left in 2021 and it's been without a proper creative director since. Antoine Arnaud, Bernard's son. French, seriously who's leading the company as a CEO, might be going through a little New York number there, so it could be that, I don't know, but a rich white male, a son of the group's chairman at the helm. So it could be potentially seen as nepotism, you know what I mean? But off to Pato. Pato is not massively known, as a business is led by Sophie Brocard, boss lady, and the creatives led by Guillaume Henry. 50-50, Rimboa. Everyone's favorite luggage brand, and by everyone I totally mean me. Rimowa, a German company producing luggage, bags, accessories. Hector Muelas leading the creative teams and Yvonne Mossenberg. Two lads, one company. Loro Piana. Well, this one is unusual. CEO Damien Bertrand, who's got fashion education and tailoring experience, is sort of leading both business and creatives. Makes sense for a small brand, especially if they're going to rework. Anyway, one man show at Loro Piana. Fendi. Fendi. LVMH has 51% stake at Fendi. The rest is owned by the family, I believe. CEO Serge Brunswick. Oh god, I hope he reads it German way. Now, Sylvia Venturini Fendi, a third generation Fendi, daughter of Anna Fendi, is leading women's wear. She collaborates with Kim Jones, who leads men's wear. Which brings us to Christian Dior, because Kim Jones is also a figure that is leading menswear there too. Fendi and Dior men's is an absolute perfection. Kim Jones is just magical. His work at Louis Vuitton, it was the next best thing since Marc Jacobs. I mean, quite literally. So we've got Kim Jones leading men's and Maria Grazia Curie uh, leading women's creatives at Christian Dior. And CEO is Delphine Arnaud, daughter of Bernard. Curie does a lot of in the inclusivity department and is the intention that counts. Emilio Pucci. If you're into colors and the paisley print and good beachwear, you're probably already into that. Leading the creatives, we've got Camila Michelli. I don't think they do menswear. And the business is spearheaded by Sade Bu. 50-50 again. Givenchy. This one is tricky. So the CEO, Renaud de Lesquen, Lesquen, oh, a rich white man, and the creatives were led by Matthew Williams. However, end of November 2023, beginning of December, it was announced that he'll be leaving the company by the end of 2023. I don't think a new name has been announced, and I think, I hope, the courting Sarah Burton that would be absolutely fabulous. Lee Alexander McQueen led Givenchy for a while and it would make a lot of sense. Givenchy was always proud of their tailoring and Williams was sort of critiqued for not having enough personality. I digress. Point being, one mention for now. Kenzo Paris, CEO Sylvain Blanc on the business side and the very, very talented Migo who founded his own label, A Bathing Ape or Babe, um, leading the creative works. Japanese designer for a Japanese brand, love to see it. Marc Jacobs. CEO Eric Maricalle, why am I reading everything in Italian? Who helped get Marc Jacobs back into high profitability, so good job, dude. And the creative in charge, Marc Jacobs, who's very openly gay, long time married to his partner, and on top of it, they collaborate with Ava Nirui for Haven by Marc Jacobs, so we've got the full representation here. Stella McCartney. My second favorite McCartney, if anyone is keeping tabs. 
So Stella McCartney was leading Chloe Creatives before leaving to start her own brand. I believe Gucci Group was her investor back then. Stella is still in charge of the creative works and not really producing menswear collections, but they do have a pretty solid collaboration with Adidas, creating sportswear and accessories. And the business is led by Amandine Ohayon, Girl Power. That's it. That wraps up the list of houses from LVMH website. So to add it up, across 15 houses, we've got four women across the creators, three openly gay men and two BIPOC men. On the business side, we've got five women and 10 men. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's apparently better than carrying the low below bar. If you had fun times, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to leave a comment, go for it. And if you don't, that's fine too. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.